preventative maintenance we've kind of covered at a high level. Um, it's driven by some of those maintenance schedules that you set up inside of Dynamics. Um, it allows for us to do that date-driven and counter-driven like we said as well, and it can generate those work orders automatically. And then it follows a very similar process flow really to those work orders, except the job type is no longer repair now, it might be inspection, right, that you set up as part of that. And you can define that really as part of that processing. One of the cooler features that we have then within Dynamics as well is the fact that if you actually have machines that can report back statistical information um, via uh, an API, and most machines have that. A lot of machines, they, they actually uh, have SQL databases, for example, that they, they can dump information to. But we can actually take that and also then drive counter integration inside of Dynamics using IoT, which is called Internet of Things. So we can actually get real-time data from these machines to be able to then generate, for example, preventative maintenance work orders as part of that processing. So if we go ahead and take a quick look at that, let's do our, our preventative maintenance look just really quickly here. If I go ahead and expand as an example here my uh, menu and we go into our maintenance plans, this is where we can see some of that additional detail then regarding those maintenance plans. So I've got a forklift preventative maintenance, a generator, and then an extruder preventative maintenance plan that has been set up inside of our system. What I have down here is some of that detail then related to it. So we have a weekly preventative maintenance that we run on our extruder line that's time-based, so it's weekly at this point. And basically we're repeating this from 8-22-2019 weekly as part of that process. And we can see that there are three assets that have these preventative maintenance plans assigned to them as part of that process. Now, what's cool about this is the fact that you can actually have additional lines or steps that are involved in this maintenance plan. It just doesn't have to be one line that's related to it. An example is our generator uh, preventative maintenance that we have. So we have, for example, a weekly preventative maintenance schedule that we drive with this maintenance plan set up that we have, but we also have an annual preventative maintenance that we do as well as part of that process. And what we also have said here is that if we have a weekly preventative maintenance that falls on when the yearly preventative maintenance event is occurring, we actually are not going to generate then that weekly event because we're handling that inside of the yearly event as part of that process. Now, the reason you separate these is the fact that maybe you have additional steps that you may need to go through, for example, for an annual preventative maintenance. And you can see we've got this maintenance job type variant that's inside of here. This allows for us basically to identify, for example, additional steps or actions that may occur then um, within a, a more or within a different time period, basically. So maybe the annual doesn't need just an electrician, it needs a different type of resource that's related to it, right? So you can define that then for those particular maintenance plans really as part of your process. Same concept really exists with maintenance rounds too, and I do want to highlight that here just really quickly. So maintenance rounds, we've got a daily round that I can actually go ahead and add functional locations or assets or even pools of assets to generate then round maintenance that we may be doing then um, as part of that particular process. And you can set up different types of rounds if you wanted to as part of that process as well. Now, eventually what happens here from an asset management perspective is that it's going to actually generate, for example, maintenance schedule lines that we can then use to basically plan and generate work orders then inside of here. So this is our maintenance schedule that's inside of here where we can see then all the different types of maintenance events that need to occur that were generated based upon those particular plans that we identified. So remember when we were looking at the extruder as part of it, you can see here it generated that preventative maintenance perspective with it. And if I wanna see, for example, all of the extruder maintenance perspectives that are inside of here, just like in Excel, I can do a filter really quickly and hit apply. And then I can see, for example, that weekly maintenance plan that's going to occur then against it. And what we do inside of here is a couple of things. Some customers want to actually have it where they come in here in the morning and they look at the maintenance plans that are related to it for that day. So you could filter, for example, on 829. 
And what they do is they highlight them and then they generate the work orders. And when you generate the work order, you can also group these a little bit as well if you wanted to. So if you wanted to generate an individual work order per line, or maybe you've got one tech that's gonna go through and do everything. Well, what you can do is you can do one work order per trade, for example, that you want. So that way it generates um, not additional work orders, you just do one work order for, as part of that particular process, right? So you can actually go through and then create those work orders and group those a little bit differently than when using, for example, these maintenance schedules with it. But the net result here is that you generate that work order, we'll do the one work order per line, and now, that comes out as if we look over to the right here, we have a work order that's created and here's the work order number. And if we go to that work order, we can see now that we've got a mechanic requirement for it. And just like I showed with the other one, if you want to then do a purchase for it, or if you want to enter in time against it, you can start doing that processing then from a work order perspective inside of here.